Hello again everyone, David here, NM Brief Relief, where we help you preserve your health and your wealth. And what we're going to do today is going to be helping you on the wealth preservation side of it. And what we're going to specifically be talking about is the different ways you can go about purchasing gold and silver. And stacking, whether it be for collecting, whether it be for trying to make money, or the preservation of your wealth. But well, we're going to learn the different types of coins and bars that are actual silver. Uh, so you got to watch something to watch out for. Now, how do you determine the price of it? So what there's what it's called is the worldwide spot price for gold and silver. Now what that is is that's what's determined on the stock market what the actual price of gold and silver are. Now, right now, it's about 1400 for gold and about $16 for silver. Now, that's not the price you're going to pay when purchasing a silver or gold coin or bar. Now, that is just the actual spot price for the world uh, spot price on the COMEX. You're always going to pay a premium over the spot price always and determine on what type of coin or bar you buy will determine how much over the spot price that you will be paying now what is uh, another thing I want to mention and we have a whole video on it but the gold to silver ratio now what is the gold to silver ratio the gold to silver ratio is how many times the price of silver one ounce will go into the price of gold one ounce now, right now, it's about at 90, which is an historical rate. Now, if you don't understand, I'm going to give you a quick analogy. If gold was at $1,000 and silver was at $10, then it would be 100 to 1, meaning it would take $10 100 times to go on a $1,000 one ounce silver bar. Now, hopefully that's going to give you an idea. Now, when purchasing gold or silver, there's different purities and weights you can purchase them in. Now, gold and silver, I'm pretty sure you've heard like 24 karat gold, 18 karat gold, 14 karat gold. Now, the higher in carats you go, the more pure the gold is. The lower in carats you go, the more non-pure, the more other base metals is in there and the less gold is in there. Now with bullion, you're going to see like a number, 0.999 or something like that. Um, usually you do when it, when it comes to pure gold. And you're going to see that. And pure silver, bullion, when you're talking about bullion. Now with silver, it's a little bit different because when you're not talking about pure silver, then you're talking about sterling silver. Now sterling silver is usually what uh, uh, they make for chains and, and they use for coinages almost pure about 90 percent pure but they call that sterling so if you ever heard of sterling silver that just means that it's about 90 percent pure it's not pure silver pure silver would be 0.999 billion like pure gold would be per silver would be um so that's uh, a really significant when determining exactly how and what you're gonna how you're gonna stack and what you're gonna purchase in that stack now, gold and silver are both real money and can be purchased in both the same way as we just spoke about. Now, again, so your so money can be purchased with your currency. And if you don't know about that, look at our currency versus money video and you'll understand a little bit more. Now, when you're first starting, we say make it as easy as possible. And, uh, and that means that don't go in, don't jump in the middle of the lake, just slowly, gradually get into it. Uh, don't make it troublesome for your finances, only do what you can. Uh, $20 a month, $30 a month, $20 a week, $30 a week, whatever you can afford. Uh, don't go out for a piece of pizza when I eat, all, eat, eat in and, and use that money to go buy yourself a Silver Eagle or something or a Panda. Now. Of course, if you have the means, by all, purchase $1,000, either a gold ounce, thousands of dollars if you can, or, or, or kilos of silver, and so on and so forth. But also do the research. If you're going to be buying and doing this, watch more videos, read more, do some more research on the monetary history and our, and our monetary and what the actual constitution says about silver and gold as money and uh, what other countries are doing. Now, when you're first starting, 
uh, old American silver coins is what I really like and what I recommend per people purchasing when they do this. Now what do I mean? These are half dollars. They're pure silver, if you can see they're from 1964, pure silver, and, um, and they're 90% silver. So anything from 1964 and before, you're going to see pure silver. If you look at that, it's a silver, silver, silver. Now, you can get that also in quarters, 25 cents. Look at 1951, 1945. Ooh, what's that? It's a quarter. It's 1928. Yeah, that's an older quarter. Whoa. How'd that slip in there? 1964, you see. Oh, another one, 1928, 1940. Look at the side, you guys. All silver. Now, if you look at a coin that's made today, you're going to see that it has like a copper lining in there. You see that? It isn't silver, it's like copper. And that's what our coinage is today. So, look at these. These are copper coins. Ah, oh, come on. Compared to the silver coins. So, the copper coins are on the right. You see the dates, there's the newer coins. 2006, 2018, 1928, 1951, one to the left. See that? So the coinage that we have today is, a co is copper, base metals. There's no pure uh, precious metals in there at all. Let me show you some dimes. Just some dimes. You can see the date on those, 1943. 63, 1963. Now, I'm going to all put all these together again. Look in the side of them. And they're all silver. Now, let's get a couple of, uh, get a couple of regular ones in there. <clears throat> see if you can spot them out. I put two of them. Amongst all these silver, I put two copper clad dimes. Can you see the two? Right there's one. And right there's one. Base metals. The basement of our currency is what happens there. Now, let's go on. The, so that's called constitutional money. You also hear about it as junk silver, but I don't like to call it junk silver because no silver is junk to me. Uh, so let's just throw that term out today. Constitutional silver or government silver, meaning that old government money. And it's really great because it comes in fractionals. It's, you can get it really close to spot because there was millions and millions of them made and they were all hoarded. And uh, you can even get them in old dollars, Morgans, from the early um, 1900s however these have a high premium compared to like the 60s 1960s 1950s uh, uh, you'll get really close to spot compared to the dollar morgans those are uh, have like 100% sometimes uh, over the value of the spot price of silver inside of the coin now nine, remember that guys Anything from 1964 before will be silver. Now, some coins, well, only the half dollar Kennedys have some silver in them from 65 to 70. 40% silver. Now, after 1970s, 1971 and over, uh, they were all just clad. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that the same year that Nixon took the world off the gold standard, America totally stopped you taking silver, took silver out of our monetary coinage. Totally going against what the Constitution says about money. Now, next, we're going to go on to generic silver. Now, what generic silver is, is usually like uh, um, just regular bullion that you can buy uh, in either bars or coins. Now, um, this is a good 
a version of a generic coin. It's just a regular coin. It's not government backed, nothing like that. It doesn't say a it doesn't say a dollar, it doesn't say United States of America, one dollar, nothing like that. It's just a regular coin. It's probably made by a private mint. However, it does say 0.999 fine silver and it says one troy ounce. So we do got a one troy ounce of fine silver bullion. Now this will be the second closest to spot, meaning you only pay a little bit over the premium of what the silver is inside. Um, and they have them in bars. This would be kind of like a generic bar right here from a company. It's a ten, it's a ten ounce bar, <clears throat> ten ounce bars. Look in the back, ten troy ounces. Point nine 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 pure silver. I love silver shield. We'll talk a little bit more about them and their special coins that they have, mini mintages. But these guys mint a bunch of these as much as people will buy. Uh, but they're still cool to have, and they're really close to spot because they're considered generic. Uh, gold or silver um, and you can get them in generic basically um, you can buy bars that are not in a stays this is a state meaning they check the purity and, and weight of it and uh, and this corporation um, numbered it and they guaranteed it so um, this has a little bit more premium over the spot than it'd be a regular RMC just thrown there out there but not in a say card which a lot of companies have both gold and silver. You can buy them both and not have to worry about uh, paying too much over the, the spot price. Um, some of these private mints are giving, are gaining a lot of popularity, you guys, uh, for uniqueness and low mintaging. With Silver Shield over here that I was going to talk to you about, uh, we'll talk a little bit more at the end when I tell you about what I'm doing now. But uh, Silver Shield is, is a private mint that is doing some great, great items. And uh, you can see some a link in the description below if you want to get some of their stuff. Now, government-backed bullion. Now, what is government-backed bullion? Government-backed bullion is actual bullion that the United States government makes at the, at their, at the mint, at the United States mint. So it's government-backed, so you know that it's really good, you know it's pure, and, uh, and it's known around the world. So it's easily recognizable and can be sold easily when you need to. Now, what is that? Silver Eagle is one of the most obvious and known around the world. An American Silver Eagle. This is it right here. Every year, it's the same design. And uh, in one troy ounce, it says there, one ounce, fine silver, one dollar. Now you see it says one dollar there. It's actually, so it's actually a government, now it's way more than one dollar. This is actually a one ounce of silver. And what did I just tell you a while ago, guys? That uh, silver was at $16 an ounce. Plus you're paying for government silver three to five or more dollars over spot price. So if the spot price is at $16, you're paying roughly 20 to $22 for this coin. Now, the more you buy, you get to save a little bit of money, but, uh, but it's not worth $1. It's definitely not worth $1. Um, but there's other, mint, other mints like the Australian mint that has Australian kookaburras. Now, the kookaburras are cool because they are different every year. Uh, but of course it has Elizabeth and it says one dollar here Australia um, So this is another government-backed coin uh, another one of the other more popular coins are the Canadian maple leaves. It's probably the second most popular coin in the world and uh, And again guess who's back there. There she is the Queen herself again Queen Elizabeth and of course um uh, the Canadian maple leaf, really recognizable around the world. Uh, ooh, we got the Mexican Libertad. Now this is a Mexican, the Mexican mint doing this one. Mexican Libertad, one onza plata pura, 2014 lei, 0.999, that lei is the purity. In an old coin, like especially because the Spanish ruled a lot uh, for a long time, the monetary history, you'll see the purities on coins, and I'll show you one in a minute. An older coin. Uh, here is a, I believe this is from, uh, let's see, this is the Philharmonic from 
I believe Austria. It says 1.5 euro on the bottom. It has the Philharmonica and it has um, guitars and stuff like that. So those are government backed bullion. Uh, here's someone from China. The pandas, very popular. A government backed by China and it has 10 yuan. And these ones are South Korean. My personal favorites right now, other than the pandas. And it's one clay. And we'll talk about these. These are numistic. These are collector's items already. Because they only made so many of them. Very few. And, uh, and they're really, really great looking coins. South Korea, they're doing awesome. And these... Uh, China, other Chinese coins that are gaining premium like crazy and I'm so glad when I purchased these I tell you guys they were like $22 in the morning uh, about 7 8 o'clock by noon they were at 24 25 I purchased them because like what's going on and by that afternoon they were like at 35 now they're like at $70 each that's how much they've gone up in value I've already I've already doubled my money plus with these and I bought uh, I think I bought 25 of them okay now, on, let's, move, let's move on. Now, <clears throat> again, easily recognizable government bullion. So if you want to do, around the world, pandas, South Koreans. Um, now, the Asaid cards are the ones that you're going to see that we have here. They're the gold and silver cards that are... Now, you don't really need to do this and have them in an Asaid card if you get it from a reliable source. And it's just one ounce with all this, because all this is going to be behind the bar anyway. So no matter what, you're going to get, you're going to see behind the bar how much it is, who made it, uh, how fine the gold is, and, and, and more than likely a serial number. But you can get it in a say card where it shows the metal's finest to insure it, how many grams is in there, uh, with the company and maybe even one of these. You're going to pay way more of the premium over the spot than if you just got it without it being a said and all these this is a silver this is a one ounce silver I say you see that gold is more dense these bars are bigger but it's still one ounce um, and so those are really good especially if you're trying to keep them nice and you don't mind and they're easily be you can really sell those really easy because they have everything in the back and they stay nice looking and you don't have to worry about them getting all scratched up and messed up and dirty now slabbed coins are graded coin now <clears throat> slabbed or graded coins are coins these are more for the collectors collectors who want perfectly graded coins like numistic collectors, you know, rare, ancient, uh, dated coins are numistic coins that like to be graded. Um, but you can grade newer coins too if they want to try to get a really uh, uh, fine grade like MS70. If you look up grades, you're going to see that MS70, like this one, is the best grade you can get other than like a proof coin or proof like MS70. And now... You gotta be real comfortable with slabs. First of all, there's a lot of ripoff up there other than fake silver coins, which I have a stack over there of fake silver coins. You gotta be careful with that too. Always try to purchase from a reputable dealer. But with the slab coins, you're getting these awful fakes. The coins inside them are fake and you're paying a big premium over the spot price that isn't even there. Um, so for example, this gold coin here. Let's just say that this isn't even a gold coin. This coin is fake, but this is a, and it says right here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it, one-tenth of an ounce of sil of gold, 0 0.999. So if gold is at $1,400, and this is $140. Now, because it's graded MS70, it's going to have a high premium, 25 50 75 depending on the collector and the time and what's going on. So if this is a fake gold coin, you're going to possibly be out a couple hundred dollars and get yourself a whole lot of fake. So you got to be careful. Uh, you, if you're not collectors and you're not trying to stack collecting slabs and stuff like that, then I wouldn't really recommend purchasing slabs for wealth preservation. Wealth preservation, we go a whole different direction. Now, new mystic coins, old coins, coins that are from the ancient times, 
you know, we have a couple of uh, examples here, like we have an old ancient Persian coin, an old ancient Chinese coin, pretty cool. It's a square, it's not even a coin, it's like a square. Um, and so, so there's Roman coins, uh, all these ancient coins you can find from thousands of years ago, biblical times, stuff like that, Persian Empire, the Roman Empire, the Roman Republic. Now, those are collectors again because you're going to always pay away a really, really, really high premium over the spot price of the silver or gold inside those coins. Um, so, for example, most Roman coins or older coins are about a tenth of an ounce of silver. And right now, a tenth of an ounce of silver is like a $1.60. Uh, with, with the money value but you're always going to pay like thirty to three thousand to thirty thousand dollars for a little coin like that or even like a gold coin a gold coin maybe thirty dollars or gold inside the gold coin but it's twenty thousand dollars for the coin so those are for mostly for collectors and you know you can evolve into doing that if that's what your choice is going to be now if you're getting legitimate greatest slab coins there are only uh, a few reputable companies you can get them from PGCP CGS is one, and NGC is the other. Now, we have some from some other companies like, I don't know, this doesn't have a name. Oh yeah, guarantee PCS Stamped and Coin. No, Fly By Night. We have another one here from IGC. I don't know. See? I bought these at an auction, so I like to keep the things on them to know who, what the price is. This is another one. Uh, uh, MS64, look at that. Uh, and it doesn't even have a name of the company. This is another one I see a lot. International Numistic Bureau. Again, not a company that you want to uh, buy your slab coins from. And yet another one. This one looks nice. But ANACS, I have no idea what that is. So, um, just so you can learn about the slabs, PGCS, PCGS, and NGC are the two companies that if you're going to get slab coins, buy them from them, or have a reputable dealer that has those, and of course, always check the silver or gold content. Now, I have been stacking for about three years now, and I have gone through some trials and errors, you, I got to tell you. Learning from, learning the bad ways, excuse me, learning the hard ways and losing a lot of currency in the process. Now, with no guidance at all, and in-depth research on how to purchase and how much, you gotta, you're not going to really get far. Hopefully, I can help others and you to learn and not make from the same mistakes, costly mistakes that I made. I started buying a Sade gold and silver, thinking at the time that these were the, that's what I'm supposed to purchase because they're secure, they're a Sade, they tell you what they is. But I didn't ask myself, why am I stacking and with that answer will come the path to take in stacking. Why do you want to stack? Again, is it to make money fast or try to anyway? Long-term investment, preserving your wealth, uh, stacking just as much as possible. Uh, are you collecting? Are you doing a little bit of, of, of two or three of those? Now, these are the ways that we can help and assist you or anyone interested in gold and silver wealth preservation stacking or and or collecting. Now that we have gone over all of that, I want to go a little over about my path and the mistakes that I made and lessons I've learned and what I'm doing now. Now, I'm stacking for the long term, but I'm also investing and semi numistic coins for the long term and possible short term gains. So let's go a little bit over that right now. Okay, so again, when I first started, I was on the assumption that I had to get him in the say card. So I got them in these and I was paying way over, way over what I was supposed to be. So then when I started doing a little bit of research, I researched what would be the most, uh, like I said, the inex most inexpensive way to get it. The most metal I could get for the least amount of money. Basically, the least premium over spot. And what was that? The government silver. So I looked up and saw, ooh, bought a bunch of uh, Kennedy half dollars, like I mentioned before, pure silver. Remember, 1964 before. But since I didn't know and understand, what I went and did was, I went in with the assumption that any Kennedy half dollar was 
silver and worth my wealth preservation uh, currency. And I went and I purchased a bunch of half dollars that were not silver, that were from 1971 or above, 1980s, 2000s, I was buying them, because I didn't know, we never really use them in society, uh, any of them that I got, I, that I ever, if I ever saw them, I would like trade them up, and didn't really care about them, and so I thought it assuming that people just didn't know, and I was like, hey, hey, hey. but uh, but yeah, I, w I bought uh, a bunch of coins that were not silver, just because I thought all Kennedys were silver and they weren't. So after that incident, I started researching what would be the the best purchase for my money, the best silver for sure for money. Then I started getting into government silver, like the Silver Eagles, the U.S. Silver Eagle, um, and uh, and they, depending on what's going on in the economy and silver market, will determine and how many people is buying it, how much you're gonna pay over the premium. But you're paying roughly three to seven dollars over the premium spot price so if the spot price is at 16 for the silver eagle you're paying 20 to 23 dollars and then i started buying kookaburras i started buying philharmonics uh kangaroos uh the kangaroos i believe don't change every year also um uh, and then I started realizing that they produce every year the Silver Eagles or Philharmonics are the same every single year. So I started thinking to myself, kind of, it gets kind of boring because you're starting to stack the same stuff every year. And like, oh man, come on, something different. It gets kind of boring. So the pandas are super cool because the Chinese pandas change every year. And these guys, they raise in value. Like, it doesn't matter. After a couple of years, Anytime you try to go look for some, uh, you're going to see that they're going to be way, the premium is going to be sometimes two to three times the spot price. So like, let's see what year this is. Like 2018, really close to spot. 2017, really close to spot. But you get like a 2011, 2009, 2008, you're, you're $60, $70. And these guys are going to start raising in value as the years go by. Uh, again, because they don't print too much of them. They don't mint, uh, I mean, they don't mint the same picture every year but they still mint millions of them so then i started looking into other uh so uh, government silver like oh when i saw these south korean ones uh lucky i got into the game right away and i think i told you how the price was just rising um i really got lucky with these guys from china uh because they were the first issue and when they came out saying new coin check them out uh, I got this little notification on the email and it was like $20, $21 and like 7 o'clock in the morning and then at like 9 or 10 it was like 23 and then like at 12 it was 25 and it just kept going up and I bought 25 of them and then by the following day they were sold out and the price was like $60, $70 each. So I've already more than doubled my money on those if I wanted to try to get rid of them. And so then I started really looking for other stuff, and that's when I found the Silver Shield. Now, mind you, there are some cool government special coins, like this Brill ones. You get a certificate of authenticity from the U.S. government, but I think there's still like 500,000 of these, or, or 1 million that they make of them. But only because I liked it and I thought it was cool, I got that one. But the Silver Shield... The, the South Korean, the Chinese, and the Silver Shield are my favorite now. But back to the government silver, when I was buying government silver, I was also buying government gold. And this is old gold. Now, you're not going to see any government gold on, uh, after 1933. You're only going to see it pre-1933. Um, and this is a, a double eagle from 1911 it looks like it's one ounce of gold $20 this one ounce of gold right now is worth about $1,400 one ounce of pure gold in here guys uh, here's another one ounce gold coin um, now gold is clunky and heavy and this is how the scam comes I just want to tell you real quick I, I like my my gold certificate it says here there certifies that there has been deposited in the treasury of the United States of America $20 in gold coin payable to the bearer on demand. 1928. So, you would take your 
currency and then they would give you your money so there's a video I have on that check it out this is a $10 gold uh, a half ounce eagle it is called a regular eagle uh, I love it this is one of the pride and joys of my collection so as I was buying government not only US government but uh, this is a two and a half dollar government piece and uh, this is a one dollar one dollar gold coin from the US government which is one dollar eighteen fifty one I think it says one dollar and this is from Portugal little tiny piece of gold <laughs> um, and here's a gold coin from Mexico un peso I think so when I was buying my government silver I was buying my government gold and if you have the means when you purchase like pandas or the Chinese or the South Koreans if you can purchase them in a mint box you're gonna be later on it's gonna be way worth more and, and actually you're saving money if you can, if you have the means you're actually saving money because you get bulk discount um, but the silver shield let's go back to the silver shield he's all silver silver shield he only has one gold coin you can purchase from him and it's uh, it's beautiful now he does some regular bullion coins that you can get for like two dollars over spot so if sixteen dollars you're gonna get this coin for eighteen dollars and this is Andrew Jackson this is one of my favorite coins I got from them so far uh, uh, the silver shields in the back but it's great it's a regular bullion coin you know you get um, you can buy as many as you like you get certificate of authenticity because you only make so many of them same goes for the bullion coin this is a this is a, a proof coin and I got number 206 out of 548 and they're beautiful I, I think that this guy is gonna and you go on eBay and every single one of these coins are worth way more because you can't purchase them anymore like with all these other ones you can keep purchasing because there's millions of them so I mean they're prestige they're perfect they're great so that's kind of like my way of doing it uh, I got these from Silver Shield 2 Jesus the first bankers kicking the bankers out the money lenders first time Jesus got mad and the only time he got mad is at the bankers and then I killed the bank, Andrew Jackson. So if you like this video, you found it informative, please let every, please give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a comment, share with everybody you know, and hopefully you got something out of it. If you need any help, let us know. I can help you with your wealth preservation, and hopefully we can get you going and to preserve preserving your health and your wealth and living a longer, happier, better quality of life. Until next time, I'm David, and in brief relief, preserving your health and your wealth. Until next time.